Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. It's likely that you've seen these signs around your city, but not known exactly what it means. The Close to Home Fishing Program has been around for over 30 years, and there are now a collection of partnerships that the Wildlife Department has with different municipalities and cities all across the state. Now, in total, there are 46 ponds in the program, and each one is intensively managed and receives little extra attention when it comes to fish stocking, harvest, special events, angler access, and water quality. So here's your sign for a perfect destination for your next outing. A wildlife department that prioritizes urban fishing opportunities. Just another reason to love Oklahoma and the adventures that await you. I ain't seen this much water in a long, long time over in our part of the corner. There ain't a lot of it, but uh, it's good to be back down here. I think it was about 1984, last time I was on this lake, and uh, we used to come down here and jug fish a lot back in the 70s, and uh, it is just good to be here and get out and enjoy uh, God's creation and Mother Nature and hope we catch some fish. Right now we're looking for some fish on the graphs, find something that we like to sit on. Uh, we, we're seeing some fish, but nothing that we really like. Uh, we, we want more fish on the graph than what we're seeing to sit and try to catch them. So we're moving around right now, trying to locate a good good group of fish that want to bite. There must be a bunch of bait in here because they're that's mo mainly what they're catching. You can see them dive bombing the, the water. Uh, they're catching bait and eating it. And uh, those striper come in here and basically feed on the, the bait. And uh, we get close enough, hopefully they'll start moving there this way with they get our uh, bait scent trail and hopefully we'll get after them. Now, they're already getting closer to us right now, so I guess we'll see. It's real, don't crank it. Yeah. All right, Garrett. Bob, you have to work on your netting skill. I think dinner, supper, and breakfast right there. This beautiful, thing gets gone. Beautiful fish. And we can say we caught a fish. So it is a good day. My name is Kent Rollins. I'm from Hollis, Oklahoma. And uh, me and my wife, Shan, we uh, have what you, I guess we just call it uh, Kent Rollins Cowboy Cooking. Uh, you know, we've uh, cooked in all but about four states. And uh, we, we get to see a lot of people. Uh, I think the thing that we really uh, went to work on five or six years ago was YouTube. Uh, it's a great platform for uh, to reach a lot of people, and we have the best fans in the world. And uh, I think right now we're about 1.86 uh, million subscribers. And uh, but the Beagle Dog, he has more than me. He's a great dog. All of them we have are rescues. You know, I first started cooking for elk hunters many years ago, and then went to cooking on working ranches. And um, it's, uh, it's it's been a great life. You know, I've met some of the greatest people in the world, and. Uh, been in places that were so remote you didn't know they existed. People have been fascinated with fire uh, for thousands upon thousands of years, and fire's always been a focal point for people together. But it's not just for warmth. You can cook a lot of great stuff outside with the fire. We've been Dutch oven cooking for about 35 years, I guess, and uh, but also cook a lot of stuff on a grill. And when you can, when you can bake something in a Dutch oven, whether it be an apple pie or homemade biscuits, whatever you pull out of there, you know, it, it brings people together and. Uh, Outside is what it's about. Flip him over. We'll cook him up after a while and it'll be good eating. There. He paints those fish right on the gill plates like that. Basically, as you can see, they don't move. I don't see very many southwestern Oklahoma boys over in this part of the woods. I'm one of the transplants, I guess you'd call it. I moved over here four years ago. It'll be five in August. I transferred from Tillman County as a game warden to Marshall County as a game warden. I wanted to work the water. So a lot of guys from southwest Oklahoma don't like it over here. But they say there's too many trees and too much water. 
I love the trees and I love the water. I actually went to school to be a game warden. Uh, I went to the same school he went to. We both graduated from Swasu. Go Bulldogs. Uh, so I, I knew from actually a young age that I wanted to do something that uh, I loved, uh, but I didn't quite know what I wanted to do. I uh, went to Swasu, got my Parson Wildlife Law Enforcement degree. Uh, the reason for that, love hunting and fishing. So why not go and protect it? You know, uh, did that and I'm very glad I did. I don't see myself doing anything else. So. It's that guy that baited the hook. He knew what he was doing. Pitch on, pitch on. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right, brother. I'd rather catch a fish that's tall. If you can, keep that right here. I'm not trying to get a hook in my hand today. That's what we want that screen looking like. At least we didn't get skunk today. Well, I can't even keep up with them, you know? They just keep throwing them in that, in that ice chest up there and, uh, you know, that's what I call it. It's time nearly to eat. On Texoma, you can have 10 stripers per day per person. Now out of those 10, only two of them can be over 20, inch, 20 inches long. Those uh, 20 inch fish are, are brood fish. Those are the ones that are able to reproduce when it's time for them to reproduce. Uh, if you don't catch your 20 inch fish, you can keep two more that, you know, you can keep 10 fish total, but only two of them can be 20. So if you didn't catch your 20 inch fish, you could have 10 fish under 20 inches if that's what you wanted on stripers. Uh, this lake is known for it, it's, you know, the striper capital of the world, so people say it. I, I, if I remember correctly, we have 117 guides on this lake, uh, Oklahoma and Texas, that's a lot of fishing guides on the lake. And even as much fish as they catch daily, weekly, monthly, however you want to add it up, we still have fish in this lake. So, it, you know, our fish division has done a great job on helping manage the limits on this lake for all kinds of fish, whether it's striper, crappie, largemouth, smallmouth, catfish, whatever you want, this lake has it. It's a it's a great, great place to come out and enjoy the enjoy the lake. Well I want to thank y'all uh, so much for uh thank you for coming with us. Oh brother it's a treat and uh, y'all are welcome at our camp anytime and uh one thing about fishing the best part of it is just get to spend it with people you like and uh uh, y'all are y'all are good folk, and then we get to eat them. That's, that's right. the best part. That's, that's the yeah. best part. And you're that's welcome good. to come fishing with us anytime you want. All right, brother, I appreciate that. But I think we'll build fire now. I think y'all you look really hungry. I'm always hungry. <laughs> I'm ready to go eat. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank both of you. Yes, thank sir. you. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I think you can see there in the background, the big Lake Texoma, we down here doing some striper fishing. You know how long it's been since the cowboy got to go fishing at all? Cause in my part of the state, there ain't much water you can dip a pole in, but 19 about 84 was the last time I was on this lake and we caught some striper. But today, oh, the good, the good game wardens took me out in the big boat. They tried to drown me around the corner there once or twice, but I hung on and, uh, and we did catch some fish. But we're gonna cook them what I call just easy and simple or bake. They'll have a great sauce on them when they get started. And we got us some hardwood lump there that's going and we're just gonna start this out with really the basics. And what is it? Hey, you gotta have something for them fillets to lay on when you get them in here in that Dutch oven because we don't want them to just sit right there on hot iron. So we're talking about what? I'm talking about lemon. And you want to cut them to where they're about that thick. That way we've got something that we can place in here and things are going to sort of try to stay level on occasion. We just need to cover that oven pretty well. Try not to leave too many vacant spots in it to where somebody don't fall apart. And you could use lemon, you could use onion, anything as a buffer to set there in the bottom of that Dutch oven. Or if you've got just a small insert that you can put in there, a 
They make a round grate that'll fit right on there with a washer, so you can get that up off the bottom of that. Works fine, but I think the lemon does bring some more flavor to it, and that's sort of what we're after today is get the most out of what we caught because we went to a little effort, but not a whole lot. Anytime that I'm gonna bake a piece of fish or even grill a piece of fish, I like to score it just a little right here. You ever seen that fish when you cook it, stuff wanna try to curl up at the end? Well, this will prevent that. And it works really well too if you're doing it on salmon. Just go ahead and score it. Just go down to the bottom of the skin. Don't go all the way through. And also this will let that seasoning get in there a little deeper to where everybody gets a little bite of it as we go. Today, we're putting our original seasoning on there. It's got a little citrus base to it, so it really works well on fish. And it's just like where I live in southwest Oklahoma. You can tell the breeze is blowing in that direction. So aim wherever you need it to be, and that'll be the right spot it gets on. And then right on top the lemons they go. They work as a buffer, but also for flavor. But just make sure they ain't sitting directly on that iron. Now we're gonna take us some good Kerrygold butter. I need you to just cut some slabs out of there, place around in there, because we gotta have something to keep a little moisture in there. And it really doesn't take that long for this to cook, because you just want that fish to bake till it's good and flaky. Make sure you get butter on everybody that's participating in there. And then we're gonna take this lemon and slice it as thin as we can. And we're just gonna lay some right on top of that butter. And it's gonna make a little bit of sweetness that comes out there at the end. So make sure everybody gets one. Then we're gonna to top it off with a little rosemary and some fresh dill weed. And then we're gonna take it to the fire. So on the dill weed, and the first time I ever seen this, I knew why they called it a weed. It looks a lot like a wild mustard in Oklahoma, but it ain't got no yellow blooms. But it does go really well with fish. And I like to just go ahead and pull some off that stalk. We'll put her down here and try to chop it up pretty fine if we can. And however you like it, if you like a bunch of it, you put a bunch over there. But to me, it gets a little overpowering if you put too much. So we're just sort of gonna keep it light here and hope everybody gets a little on them for the wind. And we'll save a little of that because a little of that deal is going to go in that sauce. Rosemary. Cut them in half and just lay them in there anywhere because they're going to help and give us some good flavor that we need. And you can always think it's better when you're cooking with something that's fresh herb-wise. So one more sprinkling of seasoning just in case everybody didn't get a little to start with. Put a lid on it. I'll meet y'all at the fire. All right, so you've seen me place all this in this 14 inch, what I call a deep oven. Now, the reason I like to use 14, sure, it's wider here at the base than a 12 is gonna be, but I prefer a deep oven when you're baking fish because I don't want that, if we was in a shallow 12, we'd be sitting about right here with that lid and them coals would be really close on top to the top of them fish. We want that to just cook really lightly on top. Most of the heat's gonna come from the bottom, so Let's get after it. We got a trivet over here we're gonna set in and people ask, a trivet? I say, yeah. You know, we make a lot of these and uh, it gets that Dutch oven up off the ground. We make a three and a half inch and a five inch. Well, today with the breeze we got, we're gonna use a five. And remember, I'll be showing you here in a minute, but rotation will be your friend when we're cooking in this Dutch oven. When you're cooking something in a Dutch oven, the common mistake that people make the most is way too much heat. We can add heat to it if it's not done, but if it's burnt, it's too late. So always really start with less than what you think. I try not to ever get any coals directly under a Dutch oven, and when that wind is blowing, we have created us a microwave. I put them that close for a reason, just so y'all could see me rake them back a little ways from it, because that stuff will get hot in the wind today. 
It'll take this probably close to 15, 20 minutes to cook. We'll check it every once in a while. And when I was talking to you about rotation, we're gonna rotate that lid half a turn one way, the bottom half a turn the other. That way we even out any hot spot of coals we might have from one side to the other. So we'll check her here in about 10 minutes to see how things is coming along. Well, while them strappers is over there baking in that Dutch oven, you know, to me, sauce really complements a baked fish really well. So uh, I sort of put this together years ago and I always sort of fall back to it. And that's to start out with, with some good mayonnaise. And you can make this to where it's a drizzle sauce or a dipping sauce. It doesn't make me no difference, but we got to have some horseradish to go in there because I really like a little heat to my stuff and that's going to balance out really well with some, what you call it, Worcestershire sauce. Them folks over there, they always get on to me across the pond and say, you don't know how to spell it. Well, I don't know how to say it either. So you call it whatever you want to. Now with all that lemon and stuff we got in there, we want to counteract a little bit of that with some sweetness. So right there at the end, we're going to add some honey. We'll taste this before we ever get our plum ready to go to see if we need to add anything to it. But it works well on anything. Takes a place of tartar sauce at my house, it does. So let me get this stirred up. We'll give it a taste and see if we're close or not. Mm, we are close. So in that, we're going to add just a tad of seasoning. And if your fish likes a little getting ready, go ahead and chill that in the ice box. And when it comes out, you can just sort of spoon you some on there or rake it on there, however you want it, or dip it in there. It goes well on everything. Well, it is a done deal. It is stick a fork in it. It is time to go. And it is a right pretty sight sitting in that Dutch oven. It is. Always be sure you let them cool a little bit before you try to get them out you're more apt to get a whole one on the plate that way. So we're gonna see if we can't slip under here. Get us one of them out of here. And he was so easy, we're gonna go for two. Now, the stuff that I really like, because it goes on everything really well. I don't want you to be overpowering, but I want you to have some of it on you. Well, folks, we're going to let them cool off just a minute before we have a bite. But, hey, I think I need to go back and check, check it off the list right at the top and make sure that I thank the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife, Outdoor Oklahoma, but also Billy Bob and Grant for taking me out there fishing. Oh, my gosh, don't get no better than that. And, folks, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of water in Oklahoma. Get you a fishing license. Go out there. Catch your supper. Catch your breakfast. Catch it somewhere. And then bring it around the fire. Share it with family and friends. An outdoor experience like that you can't beat. It's like a Christmas present deluxe. It is. But we caught them, we cleaned them, and we're going to eat them. Mm. There's so much flavor that comes out of that first bite. You get that rosemary right off the top and some of that little bit of dill weed. But that striper is so white, so flaky, you can see it there. I mean, this is a great fish to bake, folks. It ain't just made for frying. But when you drizzle that sauce over the top, that good original seasoning we have on there, this is five-star dining, and we didn't have to kick the Michelin tires or nothing. do without this rain today. Oh, you and me both. That ain't... The, ba the bad thing about the cloudiness is it makes the grass carp hit a lot later. Well, we got time. We can wait them out, I guess. They love the rain. Well, I'm getting bluegill probably. It's I'm getting a little small. tired of you catching all the fish and me just yeah. sitting here. Oh, that's a good one. Is it more fun to fish in the rain if you're catching fish? I, I wouldn't know. Personally, I don't care for it much either way. <laughs> That's another good bluegill, though. That's a good-sized bluegill. That might be a That might be the next biggest one, the second biggest uh, one we've got. So yeah, that's a good the, one. It's probably about the same Fat fish, one. isn't he? He really is a fat one. And I wasn't watching it again like I should have been. Boy, he's a good one, though. That is. Right up there in the top. He didn't swallow it. It's right. Oh, there you, you got it. it. Yeah, good deal. 
No harm done for him. You got him? Yeah. It looks like a big one. That's a pretty good. Oh, it's a red ear. Big red ear. Well, it is a nice one. Come over here by Definite him. master angler right there. There you got him, man. Oh, yeah, that's a real nice one. Boy, that is a nice one. That's a real nice one. How big do you think he is? It's at least 11. I've never, I've caught a few 11s. My son's got 11 and a half. And I never dreamed I'd catch a fish like that. Boy, that is a beautiful fish. That's a real nice one. He's a nice one. one. Yeah, see Red one. ear patch. Yeah. The, uh, that's how you tell the difference. And the bluegill, when he gets this big and is in the spawning mode, he, he won't have this model effect. He'll be jet black. I see. He'll be all black. Then after they spawn, they go back a little bit more to their other color. But bluegill this size would be very rare. Boy, he's a nice one. That's something. State record's 12 and 3 quarters. Let's see what this one is. Okay. Let's see. He's broken 11. Well, you were right. He's 11 and a half. Easy. Right 11 and a half, a little bit more, maybe. He's a little over 11 and a half. Boy, that's a nice fish. I don't know that he'll make 11 and 3 quarters. That's a pretty good size. Not quite, but 11 and a close. half, right on it. How much do you think a fish like that would weigh? He's at least a pound and a half. We can weigh. Right? State well, record's a... 12 and 3 quarters, and it's 2 pounds. 2 pounds. Yeah, that, Boy, fish, that fish is an inch and a quarter under the state record. Put him back and try him again another time, huh? Yeah. That'll be good. It looks like he's doing pretty good. There he goes. That was a nice fish. He's gonna go down there and hide out in the crack in the rock, isn't he? What are you doing, Paul? Well, now that the wind's changed directions, I'm trying to look for a different waggler. A Wagner? Waggler. 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 W-A-G-G-L-E-R. We've got less wind well, now. I think so we you ought to be able to find one in there. <laughs> <laughs> We've got less wind now, so I was looking for one that would be a little bit more sensitive. What is special about these kind of bobbers or wagglers, as you say, compared to the kind that we use normally around here? It's the way you rig them so that they're neutral buoyant. You rig them with the weights. You put weights on them until only the orange point is floating. Let, let me see some of that bait we're using here, Paul. Get some out of the chum bag here. We're using blue bottle fly larvae today. They, um, they're very active, as you can see. Well, they are. There's a lot of people that wouldn't hold those in their hand, you know, Paul. Well, these are... Maggots or larvae. These whatever. aren't like you would think. These, these larvae here have less bacteria than an earthworm out of your backyard or the minnow that you're going to go fish with because they're grown hmm. in a sterile environment. I'll be darned. Um, they're grown on turkey meat, and you'll see some red ones and some yellow ones in here. They're normally white, and whatever color you dye that turkey meat, when they feed on it, that's the color of the larvae go. There's some green ones right there. I'll be darn. That's something. They really are feisty. You want to hook them on the end of the hook so that they keep wiggling like that. Well, we hope today's stories remind you that Oklahoma is such a perfect place to explore. So no matter how you choose to enjoy our state's incredible natural world, remember, your adventure starts with outdoor Oklahoma. Are good? Good. Okay. Outdoor Oklahoma is produced by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and is proud to serve and be funded entirely by sportsmen and women and outdoor enthusiasts who love and appreciate all things wild in the great state of Oklahoma. <laughs>